I am excited about preaching today. I might preach a little bit longer today. No, I'm not, but but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna deposit what God has placed in my heart, and I believe that this message is gonna be pivotal for you, your family, your neighbors, your community, in every possible way. If you would take this word and apply it to your life and say, I'm gonna embrace it. Come on, everyone say embrace it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind myself with what pastor's saying today that freedom is for me. Freedom is, is what he's called me to live. So if you have your Bible, look with me in Acts chapter 12. And, and I've been working on this message for quite some time. So I have to, I'm one of those people that overthink everything. So I had to narrow it down so that I could give you everything that, that I believe you need. So if you like to take notes, look in the YouVersion app. If you look under events, the notes are there. It lets you know when I'm done as well. So Acts chapter 12, verse 1. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met the approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. In verse 4, it says, after arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to the to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. We're doing the math. There were 16 men that were charged to guard one man. And I just want you to know before we even get into it, it's not enough. Hello? There is absolutely nothing that can keep God's presence from what he wants to take place. Boy, that's a great place to celebrate. Come on now. Let that stir up in your heart. So verse 5. So Peter uh, was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying. Let me say that again. Peter was kept in prison, but the church, who's the church? Come on, that's us. It's not a building. It's not an organization. It's people. The church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was about to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and two chains and sentries stood guard at the door. And verse 7, I love this. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and said, and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and your sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison. But he had no idea that it was an angel was doing uh, what was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. And in verse 10, they passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. And Peter came to himself and, now, and, and said, now I know that without a doubt, the Lord had sent his angel to rescue me from Herod's clutches and from everything the, Jews peop- the Jewish people were hoping would happen. What were they hoping to happen? They were hoping to happen that Peter would die the next day. But when this dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, to the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked on the door at the entrance, and a servant named Rhoda came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter's at the door. Check out the church. You're out of your mind. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Telling a kid, you're out of your mind, they told her. Uh, When she insisted that it was so, they said, that must be his angel. (laughs) But Peter kept on knocking And when they opened the door, they saw him, and they were astonished. Then Peter motioned his hand, told them to be be quiet, and he described how the Lord had brought them out of prison. Uh, If you're taking notes today, simple simple message. I gave it a title. I'm going to call it Prison Break, because I believe that God has some prison breaks that need to take place. I don't know about you, but in, in several years ago, a long time ago, there was this series of shows that I was so in, I was so captivated by. I would wait for it to come on. It was called Prison Break. Hello, and and I would just sit there and go, Oh, I can't wait till the next one, and, and watch it because I who was with me? How many men in the building? Come on, how many women in the building? Like, yeah, I watch that show. Some of you are like, I'm gonna go back and watch it on Netflix. Okay, let's go on. But but Prison Break. Let's pray over God's word. Jesus, Lord, this is your word. May your word mold us. May your word shape us. Uh, May your word uh, motivate us today. God, make us different. 
Lord, I pray that we would live up to your word, Jesus. Speak to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate his word. Hello. I just believe, I just believe that somebody in this room needs to hear this message today. That when it comes to the circumstances of your life, you are not powerless. When it comes to the issues you face in life, you are not powerless. The only time that you are powerless is when you're prayerless. And if we go through life without praying, then we go through life without power. But when Jesus came, he taught them how to pray. And when he taught them how to pray, they got, them, they got on their hands and their knees and they started praying. And when they started praying, something happened that they couldn't even wrap their mind around. And when it happened, they told a little girl, you are out of your mind. There's no way. But today we've got to be a church that understands the power of prayer. Because somebody in your family is, is in prison. Somebody in your family, maybe you, maybe just let me ask you this question. What is your prison? What is your family's prison? What is your neighbor's prison? Some of us can, can see the prison that they're living in. They're living in the prison of poverty. They're living in the prison of fear. They're living in the prison of anxiety. Some people are living in a prison of, of addiction and it's ruling their world. And, and you have told that family member over and over and over and over what they ought to do and what they should do. And you're fed up with what they're doing. At some point, you gotta start telling God, I'm through with this. I want you to set them free from this. I want you to do something in them through this. I'm going to be a praying person because when I pray, heaven answers. How many believe heaven answers when you pray? Wow. It says this, that, that it was about this time in verse, verse one. At this time that King Herod arrested um, some people that were and they belonged to the church. So King Herod's like, let me grab some church people. Let me just arrest them and throw them in prison. And he pulls one of them out and kills him. And he's like, oh, this feels good. Everyone likes this. The Jewish people enjoy this. But understand this. When Luke used the word time, there's two types of Greek words that, that, that define what time he was talking about. There's the word time. It says it's 1051 in the morning. Hello? <laughs> so it's 1051. It's, 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 it's uh, July the 3rd. It's, that's that kind of time. But this is not the word that he uses. He uses the word kairos. And the word kairos is right time, the proper time, the right season. Can I encourage you today? This is the right time and the right season for freedom to take place. This is the right time and the right season for the church to arise and to pray and to see God intervene and to see God show up in our country, to see God show up in our kids' lives. How many want God to show up in your kids' lives? Come on now. So the night before Peter is executed, he's guarded by four men. He's chained between two guys. Think of it. He is sleeping inside of a prison and he is chained between two guys and there's two guys at the door and they are guarding the door. Why are they guarding the door? Because there is a crowd of people out there called the church. They were afraid of the church, but they had no idea that the church was so full of power that they didn't have to lift a finger. All they had to do is lift their voice. And when they lifted their voice, heaven showed up in the room. And when heaven showed up in the room, everything changed. See, Peter was in prison, but understand this, the church was praying. The church, the activity of the church was praying. The posture of the church was one of prayer. Now you might think, well, what kind of prayers were these? I want to encourage you. These were not, now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayers, you know what I'm saying? These were not those, those prayers you pray around the meal that, that like someone's going to pray this tomorrow. You're going like, to like grab some barbecue and you're going to go, good food, good meat, good God, let's eat. You know what I'm saying? This is not what they were praying. It says they were praying earnestly for God to, for him. The word earnestly there means earnestly, fervently, intensely. Earnest is characterized by uh, or proceeded from an intense or serious state of mind. So whatever we're earnest about, we're serious about. Whatever you are earnest about, you are serious about. Ask any parent that has a kid in Little League Baseball. Guess what? They are serious about that sport. They are serious about that activity. 
they are so serious that everything on the planet can stop for a moment, for a season, because they are intensely, you get in their like faith. I mean, we see more stuff online of these parents losing their ever-loving mind because of what, what junior high kids or elementary kids are doing on a field. And I'm sitting there going, man, that's serious. <laughs> you are incredibly serious. You just talked to a teenager today or even a young adult, maybe even a mom in this building. You are, when, when you are earnest about this thing called Wi-Fi. Because when your Wi-Fi goes down, like, I just got disconnected from the world. Hello? <laughs> Come on now. Parents, I want to encourage you. Man, shut off the Wi-Fi every once in a while just as a joke. I'm just, just cut it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, shut it down. Hello? And watch the response and the reaction. They're like, oh, the Wi-Fi. I can't see those three people that liked my thing on Instagram. Whew. Today, over a dozen people are going to get baptized in water. They are serious about their faith. Come on, let's celebrate that today. I think, man, I, I, haven't, been, I'm, I haven't been baptized in water. Guess what? Today's a perfect day. It's hot outside. The tank is warm outside. We got a towel for you. We got a, a, a T-shirt for you. You know, change, put a T-shirt on. Get in the tank. How many think people ought to get in the tank today and get baptized in water? So the type of church that prayed was earnest, constant, persistent, and intense. They got serious about the fact that it was the right time. They got serious about the fact that their leader, Peter, the apostle Peter himself, the apostle Peter that stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached and 3,000 people came to know Christ, the guy that would share the word and encourage them and they were following his doctrine. He was arrested, put in prison, and they said, we're going to keep him there until after the Passover because we don't want a riot to take place because there's going to be thousands of people that are going to come to Passover during this time. So when all the people that are visiting get out of town, then we're going to drag him out, we're going to try him, and we're going to execute him because we're going to show how powerful we are. But come on now. I don't care how powerful the ruler of that world was, Herod himself, God had another plan. Why? Because the church was praying. And when the church prays, heaven shows up and God does amazing things. I love where James, you know, it says he goes to James's house. It's not James that was executed. It goes to James, the brother of Jesus. James wrote this in verse 5, uh, James chapter 5, 16. It says, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available. So the moment that I engage in prayer, guess what? Heaven can explode on the scene. Understand that the moment that you engage in prayer, the moment you open up your mouth and say, Lord, change this situation. I don't know what to do. Heal, move, set free. I'm tired of this thing. You start praying and engaging heaven. Guess what? Heaven can walk into the door and every chain can fall off. How many want chains to fall off? So freedom is just a product of earnest prayers. If we want our family to live a free life, if we want our family to live a free life, then let's engage in earnest prayers. Let's go after heaven. Let's pray big, bold, bold, audacious prayers. Let's pray prayers that shake the universe. Let's pray prayers and ask God. You know what, God, I, I always pray this, Lord, give us the city. The city, can't, the city can't fit in this room. But you know something? The kingdom is bigger than the city. Lord, Lord, do something so big and so great that we can't fit the people in the room. We almost can't fit you today. I love it. Hey. So Peter was in prison. Uh, yeah, the church was praying. But when he's in prison, an angel wakes him up. It says, suddenly the, the angel of the Lord appeared and light shone around in the cell and the angel gets up and strikes him. I don't know what the angel did. I've asked the angel, the Lord. You know, I'm like, this is the manifest presence of God. Anytime you see that in scripture, that's what it means. God himself walked into that, that room like an angel. And that joker is asleep. Who sleeps in prison? Who sleeps chained up between two? I mean, this joker got comfortable. I, I know it's my last night, but I'm going to get eight hours in. And, I know they got to change guards every once in a while, but, but I'm just going to, I'm going to let them know. What did, why, why do you think he was asleep? And some people in this world can sleep through a hurricane. 
I can sleep through everything. And some of you can't sleep through just like, like, like the dog moving in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like just, you know, walking by. And, but, 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 but this guy was asleep. Did he know something we didn't know? Did God say to him, hey, don't worry. I'm still going to show up. I believe he knew that God had a plan for his life that was greater than what that cell was, greater than what they were saying. Those guards were probably saying, tomorrow's your day, boy. We're going to cut your head off. Tomorrow's the day. Let's celebrate the day that we take Peter out. Peter's like, go ahead. My God's bigger. But on the flip side, you know, some people get so comfortable in their prison. You are not designed to live in prison. Let me say that again. You are not designed to live with chains on your life. Chains of fear, chains of anxiety, chains of depression, chains of sickness. You know, when I read my word, my word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. He came to set me free. I'm going to live a free life. Who's going to live a free life? Come on, clap. You're going to live a free life. Angel walks up, wakes him up. You ever have your kids wake you up in the middle of the night when they're little? My, my son would walk up and, and he wouldn't get in bed like, like early in the morning. And I would, I'd lay there and I'd, and I'd open up my eyes and it's like psh, right there. You know what I'm saying? He's just staring at you. Shock of all. I'm like, I just, like, whoa, you're getting mad, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, think of this. This guy's asleep and an angel walks up and boom, kicks him and says, get up. And he gets up and the chains fall off. You know, I'm like, like, is this a vision? You know, I mean, in, in Acts chapter 10, he has this vision and all these things come down and they like eat all this stuff they're not supposed to eat. And, and, and this, is this a vision? I don't, I don't know. But, but in this moment, everything fell off of his life. Why? Because freedom is the product of earnest prayers. We've got to be a church that prays. We've got to be a church that engages heaven. We've got to be a church that doesn't settle for chains and bondage. We've got to be a church that says we are designed and created for freedom. How many want freedom in our land? Then we've got to be that kind of church. No matter how dark the prison is, it's no match for heaven. Let me say that again. No matter how dark your prison may feel, when you call on heaven, heaven shines. When, when you read scripture, let's just be simple. The Bible says when I call on him, he shows up. So in my darkest moments, do I call on my friends? Do I call on my family? Or do I call on the Lord? It's in that moment when we call on the Lord that heaven showed up. But understand this, this guy was asleep so the church was praying and believing for him there's somebody in your family somebody you work with somebody in your neighborhood that you are tired about the way that they're living you're tired about the situation that they've settled for you're tired about those things and when you start praying guess what heaven's gonna start shining on their situation and heaven can show up and when heaven shows up the chains fall off that's what the story says. I'm not making it up. It says suddenly that the Lord appeared. There was light in the cell and the chains fell off of him. So when Peter is in prison, when he wakes up, what's the first thing he does? He goes to a prayer meeting. He's like, where's the church? When your family member finally wakes up, they're going to sit next to you in church. They're going to show up in this house. And they're going to wonder, who prayed for me? They're going to wonder, some, somebody, somebody prayed an earnest prayer and believed in a resurrecting God and believed in a God that brings freedom. And my life is a product of somebody else's prayers. How many lives are a product of somebody else's prayers? Come on now. I didn't pray myself into the kingdom. My mama prayed me into the kingdom. I didn't have a choice. She prayed earnest prayers, and God rescued me from a life of sin. And, and, and when he rescued me, he put his plan on my life. So Peter goes to the church where they're gathering in this house. And when they're gathering there, if you look in verse 12, it says, he dawns on him, and there are many people praying. But verse 13, Peter knocks at the door, at the entrance, and the servant girl answered the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she left him outside. <laughs> it's just awesome. Oh, I heard his voice. I mean, come on. When somebody knocks on your door, you yell, who is it? 
What do you want? If it's a salesperson, you're hoping that they yell. The next time some salesperson knocks at your door, just stand on the other side and yell. Don't open the door. Just, hey, what do you want? I mean, I wonder if the, shit, the servant girl is like, hey, we're in a prayer meeting. You want in? Who are you? Oh, it's Peter. Oh, wow. And takes off running. She runs to him and says, Peter's here. I know you've been praying. He's here. What's the, what's the church's response? You're out of your mind. Why did they say you're out of your mind? Did they honestly believe what they prayed? How often do we pray prayers and then when God answers those prayers, we get astonished by the fact that he answers those prayers? Or, or better yet, how often do we pray prayers and God does it differently than what we expected? I wonder if they prayed, Lord, kill Herod. Take out all those guards. Let us rule the world. Take it over. No, that angel shows up and walks him out of the out of the jail cell and brings him brings him to the church and they're like I didn't expect that sometimes we frame our prayers in ways that we expect God to answer those things and and that's when you put God in a box but when you frame your prayers earnestly and say God whatever you do just do it God whatever takes place I'm gonna enjoy it because I'm gonna pray earnest prayers and you're gonna show up and and I'm not gonna be astonished I'm just gonna be excited about what you're gonna do and when I'm excited about what you're gonna do man I just want to keep praying more prayers like that come on now the moment that you start seeing God answer prayer, that's why in the fall and in the spring, we, we do a season of fasting and praying. We, we will pray seven days in the fall, and we will, we will believe for God to do greater things, and people will fill out these prayer cards that are in your seat, and every Sunday, someone fills like several of them out, and, and, and it's amazing how incredibly detailed they put about how awful situations are and how they're saying, God, I need your help. You know what that is? Earnest prayer. Because freedom is the product of earnest prayers. If we truly want our situation to change, then start changing your posture. Start praying. Oh, how simple is that? Start praying. Start believing. Start moving towards heaven. Start opening up in the word and say, Lord, you got him out of prison, you can get them out of anything. And you, you brought angel in and shook. I mean, they, there was like 16 people that were there to guard one person. He was chained between two of them and they were stuck there, there. And guess what? The church must have thought, wait a minute. Just last week, James died. I guess Peter's next. But I believe there was a couple of them in that room. They're like, not on my watch. I am going to stand in the gap just like the Old Testament says. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to believe, and I'm going to watch God answer. I believe when they saw Peter, some of them smiled and said, look what the Lord has done. Man, look what he did. Boy, he's a way maker. He shows up in places. The chains just fell off. And, and Peter, Peter does what? He, he explains, here's what happened. What happened was I was asleep between these two guys that kept taunting me and telling me today is your day to die. And, and I was just, I was just trying to get, I took my coat off and I tried to make a pillow out of it because that was on the floor between these two guys. And, and there were two guys that were there. And I know it's outside the city. So, so, so I just thought like, the angel kicks me and I get up and I think, is this a dream? You ever have one of those deja vu dreams where you dream this dream and you wake up and you go, did that really happen? And then later on in life, God shows you something that does happen. Dreams are real at times. God uses those to speak to us at times. And I'm, I'm, some of you eat too much pizza at night and, and you dream about whatever. Rule the world. Okay. But Peter's like, I get up and the chains fall off. They didn't like, the angel didn't touch me. The angel didn't, like, the angel woke me up. But he didn't touch the chains. He didn't do that. They just fell off. Can, can you imagine when you pray earnest prayers and you watch the chains fall off your family, I think he smiled like, ooh, wow, that's powerful. And then he walks and there's two guys standing at the door and they walk out the door. The angel opens the door. And then they walk towards the city. The city has this huge iron gate and it's closed because it's at night and they don't let anybody in. 
He's walking towards the city where he was preaching a few weeks earlier. He's walking towards it and just like Publix, you know what I'm saying? The door goes, where shopping is a pleasure, you know what I'm saying? Woo! Come on. I mean, I, you know, as a kid, you like playing with those doors, you know, making them go back and forth. And, choo, 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 choo. Yeah. I mean, come on. The, the door opens, it says automatically. That Greek word says it just on its own walked open, and, and he walks into that city in that moment. And that's the moment he realizes that the Lord was with him. I just want to encourage you, church. If you're praying for family members, don't give up. If you're praying for your neighbors, don't give up. I ride through my neighborhood on a regular basis. I say, Lord, save them. Do something in that person's life. We recognize certain things in, in homes and houses that live near us. And, and, and the power of prayer can change everything. And it's the moment that we engage the heavens and say, Lord, you created every person on this planet. You've got a plan for them to, to live in eternity. And we do what? We choose to pray big prayers. So I'd encourage you, when you're looking at your family, looking at situations, Pray earnest prayers. Don't give up. Somebody in this room has been praying for 30 years for something. Listen to pastor's heart. Keep praying. Keep asking. Keep knocking. Because the miracle was at the door. I mean, Peter says, hey, it's Peter. I'm here. And they go back. Oh, you're out of your mind. It's an angel. And what does the miracle do? Keeps on knocking. Why? Because that was God's plan. Guess what? Freedom is is God's plan. You keep praying and the miracle is going to come knocking at your door. And it's in that moment you can just get excited and celebrate that this is what my God can do. He sets the captives free. How many want him to set some people free? Woo. So the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where is the Spirit of the Lord? The Spirit of the Lord is right here in this moment. And in this moment, freedom lives. Why? Because we gather in His name. Where's the Spirit of the Lord? The Spirit of the Lord is in us. Because when we say, Lord, I choose to follow you, his spirit comes and, and lives inside of us. And where the spirit of the Lord is, guess what? There is freedom. I can live a free life, free from addiction, free from burden, free from fear, free from anxiety. I've just got to recognize, hold up, the spirit of the Lord is here. He's in here. He came to inhabit here. And if he came to inhabit here, then he can set this place free. Maybe you're here today and you've, you've been praying, Lord, I need to be free of this thing. Then you pick up those chains. You get comfortable with, with your situation. My pastor encourage you. It's time to get uncomfortable. It's time to say, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of living a life that's chained to fear. I'm tired of living a life that's chained to anxiety. I'm tired of living life that's chained to the past. The past does not determine my future. My present, the Spirit of the Lord is here. He determines who I am and who I'm going to be because where He is, there is freedom. So Jesus, I say yes to you and all that you have because I want to live a free life. How many want to live free? So maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, pray for me. We're going to do two things. If you're living in bondage, exactly that. <laughs> that was a perfect moment, you know what I'm saying? If you're living in a situation where the chains are just, they just, you know what they are. And you want to let go of those things. What a perfect moment to say, guess what? The Spirit of the Lord is here. I'm going to follow him. He's going to live in me. And I'm going to let go of those chains. And I don't even have to let go of those chains. Those chains are going to fall off my life. As I pursue him and I, I, I focus my heart on him and I move towards him, guess what? He will set me free. So we want to pray for you. If you're here today and you say that, but, but this is heavy in my heart. 
Some people in this room, you've been praying for family members and friends and neighbors and coworkers for a long time. It's time to step up your prayers. It's time to pray earnest, serious, fervent, intense prayers and pray for them and say, God, I'm not giving up on them. I'm gonna pray for them and I'm gonna watch heaven step into their situation. And when heaven shows up, the chains are gonna fall off. When heaven shows up, guess what? They're gonna be sitting on my row in the next few weeks because my prayers are gonna make a difference in their lives. So what's your prison? What's their prison? No match for heaven. So let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that freedom is in you. Lord, on this day as a church, we celebrate the freedom of our country. Lord, so many people gave their lives so that we could be free. But Jesus, nobody gave their life like you did for all of us. And Jesus, you didn't just give your life. You kicked out the end of that tomb. You went down into hell itself. And you came to set us free from everything that this world tries to attach itself to us. So Jesus, I speak freedom for people in this room. I thank you that freedom is alive and freedom is well and freedom is in you because you are the author of freedom. Lord, if there's somebody here that their relationship is strained with you or they're far away from you or they don't have a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that it's in this moment we would say yes to you, Jesus. We'd say yes to your presence. We'd say yes to freedom. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I, I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I'm choose, I choose to say yes to him. I, I want him to live inside of my life. This message is speaking to me, Pastor. I, I need him in my life. If he wasn't there or used to be there, then today, if that's you, when I say three, would you just slip your hand up as high as you can and then, and then put it down? You ready? One, two, three, slip it up. There you go. You can put it down. All right, let's do that again. Boy, every section, you ready? Come on, be bold. If he's not there, today is your day of freedom. Today is your day where he lives inside of your life. We've been praying for this moment that, that you would say yes to Jesus. Listen to pastor. If you're here and there's a voice in your head that says, oh, I could do it tomorrow. I could do it next week. Or I got plenty of time. Guess what? That's the enemy trying to keep you from freedom. And today is your day to be free as he lives in you. So if you, if, when I say three, slip it up. Ready? One, two, three, slip it up. Almost. There you go. There you go. Hold it up. Hold it up. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you over there. Thank you in the back. You can put it down. Here's how it works. We pray. Simple prayer. We'll all pray it together. And all of heaven will show up because the Bible says that you're, you'll become a brand new creature in this moment that his presence will come and live in you and his forgiveness will come and forgive you. That means he forgives your sin. He forgets your sin as far as the east is to the west. It's no longer remembered. You are a brand new person in Jesus when you pray this prayer because he starts a relationship with you. You're never separated from him. At this moment, you become close to him. So pray this prayer with all of us. It sounds like this. Jesus. Jesus. Today. Today. I want to be free. I want to be free. I want to be free from sin. I want to be free from sin. I want to be free from fear. I want to be free from fear. Jesus, I know that you died for me. Jesus, I know that you died for me. I believe that you have a plan for me. I believe that you have a plan for me. I believe that you can forgive me. I believe that you can forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Of all my sin. Of all my sin. And from today forward. And from today forward. I choose. I choose. To follow you. To follow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate. Woo! Oh, you can do better than that. Come on, let's celebrate a little bit. Would you stand with Pastor? And, and uh, I would encourage you to hold tight. It's early. Hold tight. It's only been an hour and 17 minutes. Boy, Pastor's doing good. Hello, we got hot dogs and, and the weather's amazing outside. We're going to baptize some people. If you made that decision, you can text the number that's listed on the screen, my decision to the church number, or you can do this. There's a card in the seat in front of you. It says, my decision. Pull out that gray card. There's a pen right next to it. Keep the pen after you fill out the simple information, write the information down and either set it on the chair. Or you can take it to the new here booth or give it to somebody with a lanyard. And the reason why we want to do that is because we want to help you with your next steps. We believe that there's a next step that you can take. A big step you can take is today, go out and get water baptized. 
The water doesn't save you. For all our people that are getting baptized today, we'll gather together and pray with you before we baptize you, but the water doesn't save you. The water is just us following Jesus Christ and following what his word says. It's, it, it symbolizes death, burial, and resurrection when you're raised up out of it. You are raised to new life. God's got a great plan for you. Come on, let's celebrate the plan that God has for people. So here's the big one. What prison is your friends, your family, and your neighbors living in? Maybe what prison are you living in? Today as they sing, I'm going to open up this altar just for a few moments, and then we'll go eat some hot dogs and baptize some people and have a great time. Don't leave this moment. Don't walk out this door holding on to that chain. Don't walk out this door without coming and saying, I'm going to pray some earnest prayers. You can turn around right in your seat and, and, and kneel down right where you are. Or just stand there and say, God, and just open up your mouth and say, I'm tired of this thing. The moment that you say, I'm tired of it, is the moment that you say, God set me free from it. The moment that you, you name what it is. Some people are like, you have a problem naming what it is. You're addicted to something. And you're like, I have a problem naming pornography. Oh, pastor just said it. You know what I'm saying? I have a problem with gambling. Oh, pastor just said it, okay? I have a problem with anger. I have a problem with profanity. I have a problem with certain things. It, it controls me. Guess what? You are living with a chain that you are not destined to live. The moment you say, Lord, this is my issue. I want to be free from it. I'm going to pray an earnest prayer. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to pray over it. Maybe you're praying for families. I'd say pray their name. Jesus, in your name. I bring them to you. I choose in Jesus' name that they would be free. I'm tired of the situation. I'm tired of what they're walking through. From this moment on, I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep moving heaven. Heaven, show up and set them free. Two prayers. Either you want to be set free or you've got a friend that needs to be set free. As they sing, I'd encourage you to come. If you want to fill out a prayer card, you can fill out a prayer card. I'd encourage you to come, kneel down. I'd encourage you to come, stand. I'd encourage you to stand right where you are and reach your hands up to heaven. God's going to show up. Heaven is going to show up in your situation. They're coming even now. Heaven's going to show up in your situation. And freedom is real. Freedom is today where the Spirit of the Lord is and He is here. I would encourage you to move now and let His Spirit come and be, set you free from every bondage every situation come on let's lift our hands let's let let's sing about freedom today let's sing about the fact that he is a way maker in this thing come and pray with pastor come on come and pray with pastor today. thank you for your support to oceanway church if you'd like to continue to give you can visit oceanwaychurch.com for our five ways to give